Here's a weird question. What's the most iconic high school math skill? For example, I think some popular answers would be the power rule for derivatives, knowing what sine, cosine, and tangent are, the Pythagorean theorem, of course, or knowing the quadratic formula. Now, maybe the power rule doesn't win because it's calculus and not everybody takes calculus. The other three might be toss-ups, but the first two might have an advantage in the form of a simple mnemonic. A mnemonic being a simple trick that helps in memorizing the content. Even if the average Joshua doesn't remember that sine is a function whose argument is an angle and whose output is the ratio of the side opposite the angle to the hypotenuse in a right triangle, he probably remembers the mnemonic Soka Toa. Y'all remember this classic? So maybe this is the most iconic bit of high school mathematics. The Pythagorean theorem doesn't have a code word like Sokotoa, but the way people remember it is just through its form. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we could argue that short phrase is a mnemonic because the phrase as we remember it is completely devoid of context. The Pythagorean theorem is a result about side lengths in right triangles. It's not just a memorable incantation, but many people by remembering that incantation also remember the actual content of the theorem, that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle are equal to the square of its hypotenuse. So then maybe this is the the most iconic high school math skill. Comparatively, the poor quadratic formula doesn't really have any catchy phrase associated with it, like Sokotoa, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or any other math mnemonic, like FOIL, PEMDAS, BODMAS, BIDMAS, or TONKASS. And just remembering the formula explicitly, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A is perhaps too much a mouthful to count as a mnemonic. And this pains me because I'm a big fan of the quadratic formula, and it's such a vital part of high school mathematics. You'll use it over and over again in algebra to find where parabolas intersect the x-axis, and this will come up in a variety of calculus problems too. Despite this, it doesn't really have the iconic status as these other fond math memories, and I think that's because it doesn't have a catchy mnemonic. Well, apparently, the concerns of education educators in India are the same as my own. This is from a class 10 CBSE board book in India, and they have decided to shoulder the burden of crafting a mnemonic for what is, relatively speaking, a pretty complicated formula. The mnemonic takes the form of a story. A negative boy could not decide if he did or didn't want to go to a radical party. Whoops, wrong type of radical party there. The boy was square, so he missed out on four awesome chicks. And this was all over by 2 a.m. This mnemonic stretches the limits of allegory, metaphor, and narrative to capture the quadratic formula in one introvert shaming passage. You can see the correspondence between story and details here if it wasn't already obvious to you. Now I'll do a little improv for you. This is my impression of an eighth grader using this mnemonic to recall the quad formula while taking a test. Okay, use the quadratic formula. Oh, golly gee, I don't remember the quadratic formula, uh, the, the, the mnemonic. Okay, um, a, a negative boy, so A minus B. Um, could he decide it or, or could he not decide it? Oh, I can't remember. He's negative, so so I'll just minus. And then the the radical part, the radical party, radical, and then the boy was square. That's that's past tense. So the tooth tetration of B, and then four four awesome four awesome chicks, and it was all over by 2 a.m. Okay, now I know. M is slope, but what the hell are A, B, and- Yeah, perhaps this is a little bit silly, and the Redditors certainly agreed. 
but this leaves us hapless and wondering, how can we best remember the quadratic formula? Well, for sure, there's nothing wrong with just remembering x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic written in standard form. And for a lot of people, this is exactly what works after a little bit of practice. But let's do a little role play. You're Dr. Math. And young Daryl has just come and professed his complete inability to remember that blasted quadratic formula. How do we help Daryl? In lieu of a quick mnemonic or memorable story, we could resort to a desperate measure, a catchy hyperpop anthem. I thought I was kidding, but I just don't pull that sword enough. When I leave this beat, it's a crowd of scenes, so the police gon' leave a cord and off. She don't know my roots, and that's just not my sword of love. I don't know your name, baby, but I just remember important facts. Negative D plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 C all over 2 eight. Negative D plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 C all over 2 eight. Negative D plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 C all over 2 eight. Negative D plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 C all over 2 eight. It will kill your focus. It will kill your dreams, and it will kill your life. Do not be afraid, my friends. Do not be afraid. But if even this doesn't work, and push comes to shove, what are we to do? Well, one strategy that fits this situation well is chunking. Using chunking means to wrap up several small pieces of information into one memorable chunk. And if you do this to turn 10 small pieces of information into two or three memorable chunks, well, memorizing two or three chunks doesn't sound so bad now, does it? So we could take the ugly quadratic formula and wrap up some of the tiny pieces, like this and this. This gives you two chunks to remember, plus a couple odds and ends. If you just remember these two chunks, you also have to remember to put this guy in the numerator with negative b, and then you need to remember the plus or minus that goes between them. Now, how does this make it any easier? Well, these are two meaningful chunks that you are likely to work with all on their own in an algebra class. This part you'll definitely have to work with. It tells you the x coordinate of the vertex of the parabola y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. If I'm trying to sketch the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 6, I can use the vertex formula to find the horizontal coordinate of the vertex is x equals 3. So I already know the parabola will be symmetric across this vertical line through the vertex, which means I just need to find a couple points over here, then simply refer reflect them across that axis of symmetry. I can plug the vertex's x-coordinate into the quadratic equation to find the y-value, it's negative 12, and from there I can sketch the bola. And of course, the vertex is the maximum or minimum of a parabola. In this case, it's the minimum. So oftentimes, you'll be tasked with using this vertex formula just to find the max or the min. Point is, there's a good chance you'll have some experience with negative b over 2a, and and or already have it memorized by the time the quadratic formula comes up, which makes it a perfect chunk. For the other chunk, it's really the part inside the radical that holds significance. This is called the discriminant, and it's often taught all on its own, either just before or just after the quadratic formula is introduced. So again, it makes for a convenient chunk to remember. Its name comes from the fact that it can be used to discriminate between different types of quadratic equations based on how many roots they have. If the discriminant is positive, positive, then the quadratic formula will involve plus or minus the square root of a positive number. That's a very normal situation, and it's going to give us two roots, which are the x-coordinates of these x-axis intersections with the parabola. If the discriminant isn't positive, but is instead equal to zero, then in the quadratic formula, we won't really have plus or minus anything. We're just going to have a single root, which will take the form of the x-coordinate of a single point where the parabola just touches the x-axis. And in the case where the discriminant is neither positive nor zero, but instead 
negative? Well, the square root of a negative number is not defined among the real number system, since any real number squared gives a positive. Negatives are not possible. So there are no real roots. And the parabola will sit somewhere away from the x-axis, facing in the opposite direction. If your class gets to complex numbers, you'll learn that there are in fact still two roots in this case, but the roots are complex numbers involving the square root of negative one, which is called the imaginary unit. So this is another important chunk of information that's just part of the quadratic formula. Remember these two chunks and how to tie them together, and the quadratic formula will be as much a part of you as blurriness is a part of Bigfoot. Now, if you're really pressed for memorizing the quadratic formula, I would say experiencing its derivation a couple times isn't a bad idea. If you're on a test and you've forgotten the quadratic formula, deriving it from scratch might be a last resort, but it's not a bad option and it's not going to take too long if you've practiced it a few times. And you only need to know a few things for the derivation of the quadratic formula. You need to know what a perfect square trinomial looks like and how to factor it. Then you also need to know how to complete the square. A quadratic equation like this is easy to solve because the left side is already a complete square. So we can take the square root of both sides and then simply solve for x. This equation isn't factored, but I recognize the left side is a perfect square, so we can factor it and then solve. This equation isn't factored and it isn't a perfect square, but we can complete the square. Just move the constant to the other side, then take your x coefficient, cut it in half, square it, and add that to both sides. Now the left side is a perfect square trinomial. We can factor it and solve as before. And that's really all you have to do to derive the quadratic formula. Take a standard quadratic equation, subtract the constant c from both sides. We want the leading coefficient to be one, so divide everything by a. Take the x coefficient, cut it in half, square it, and add it to both sides. Now we can factor the perfect square trinomial on the left and get common denominators on the right so we can write everything as a single fraction. Take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus, isolate x on the left and simplify on the right, and there's your quadratic formula, which of course you can write in a single fraction if you like. If you can do the derivation, then you'll never be left high and dry without your precious quad formula. But I return the question to you. Is this mnemonic remotely useful? What do you think? What really is the best way to remember the quadratic formula? Personally, I favor the tried and true negative b plus or minus squared to b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I mean, come on, just drill it a couple times. It's not that hard. You can remember this. And that aside, what is the most iconic high school math skill? Let me know what you think down in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull the brain, push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psycho.